We are following some developing news this morning. Months before the November election a while back, Governor Bill Haslam's campaign headquarters, now we understand, was hit by a burglar. New Channel 5's Cuthbert Langley is at the Metro Jail with the latest on this, and we're hearing about it now because they finally got somebody responsible, they say, for this. Steve, yeah, we just heard about this, even though it happened about six months ago. It all comes down to blood that was actually found on the scene. Investigators very lucky to find that, but it took six months in order to trace the blood back to the suspect. But he's now in jail this morning on burglary and theft charges. Here's what we know. Back on August 20th, police say Daryl Johnson broke into Haslam's headquarters there on Hillsborough Village, Village, excuse me, on 21st Avenue in the middle of the night. The detectives say once Johnson was able to get inside of the building, he stole a laptop and then ran from the scene. But here's where it gets interesting. Police claim that Johnson was injured supposedly after trying to break a window getting into the building. Because of that, he left some blood behind. TBI investigators were able to grab that sample. And then once they realized that Johnson may be the suspect, get this, he actually agreed to let TBI agents take a sample of his blood. Sure enough, they were able to link that blood back to him. So he was arrested just last night, charged again with theft and burglary. This is not the first time Johnson has been in trouble for similar crimes. In fact, back in December, just a couple of months ago, he was arrested for burglary. And then back in 2006, he faced several convictions for stealing cars, all according to his criminal background. So no doubt some good news this morning that he is in jail. No word yet on where the laptop is this morning or what it contained. But still, obviously, Governor Haslam still able to win despite this burglary. Reporting live at the Metro Jail this morning, Cuthbert Langley, News Channel 5 HD. All right, Cuthbert, thank you. And right now the search is on for an armed robber who stormed into a well-known Hotel, the Hotel Preston right there just off Briley Parkway. You can see it from I-40. Happened a few hours ago. The guy demanded cash and took off. It was caught on surveillance video. As soon as police make that available to us, we will share it with you on News Channel 5. So more charges this morning after three inmates use a string and a piece of paper to break out of jail. According to the Cookville Herald Citizen, the men are using accused rather of escaping their separated cell in order to beat up another inmate. Jared Griggs, Jackie Mayberry and Lestel Davis are charged with escape from incarceration. Davis also faces an aggravated assault charge. After nearly seven months on the run, a wanted man is finally behind bars this morning. Police say Calvin Barker Jr. was caught yesterday trying to rob two people inside a car. The driver was able to take off and even dragged Barker several feet. The 21 year old has been wanted since July when he allegedly tried to rob a couple of people on Dickerson Pike. A man is facing charges after he apparently uploaded child pornography at work. Millersville PD started investigating Clifford McCloud after getting a tip back in 2013. He was arrested yesterday after investigators uncovered that he had uploaded 16 illicit images to his Tumblr account while he was at work. He's charged with sexual exploitation of a minor. We now know the name of the man who died after showing up at the hospital with the gunshot wound yesterday morning. Investigators say Dominique Rutledge was the victim. He had been shot in the leg during an argument with another man early yesterday morning. We had that as our breaking news, you may recall. A friend drove the 21-year-old to Skyline Medical Center. That's where he died. If you have any information on this shooting, contact Crime Stoppers at 74. Crime. Well, he's accused of pretending to be a cop in order to get free stuff. It didn't work, and now he's facing charges. Richard LaPena faces three counts of impersonating an officer. Investigators say he flashed a fake badge in order to get free food and even special treatments at several businesses and even a hospital in the Franklin and Spring Hill area. LaPena is apparently a bounty hunter and also had an arsenal of guns, ballistic armor, cuffs, and even night vision goggles inside his van. If you believe he's posed as an officer to you, call Spring Hill Police. Now, so far, La Pena hasn't been accused of using his fake badge to pull someone over. However, there have been several incidents where that's happened right here in the mid-state. So if you see blue lights behind you, there are some things to look out for. Even if the police car is unmarked, there should be an extensive display of blue lights. A single flashing light should raise a red flag. Now, if they just flash a badge at you, always ask for the department issued police identification. And if you're still uncertain, call 911 and ask a dispatcher to verify the officer. There's no reason that a police officer who's legitimate would ever become upset or enraged by someone asking them to verify that they actually are who they say they are.
In other news, now a stick of live dynamite caused a potentially explosive and dangerous situation along a busy roadway. City workers found the device while doing some routine maintenance work at the corner of Franklin Road and Veterans Parkway in Murfreesboro. They discovered it on Wednesday. The THP bomb squad quickly moved in to take care of it. If investigators find the owner of the explosive is a company leaving it behind, maybe for blasting or something, that company could be facing serious fine.